It's week 27 of A Year of Wisdom. Let's get to reading. Day 187. Job 6. Then Job responded, Oh, if only my grief could be weighed and my misfortune laid on the scales too. But because it is heavier than the sand of the sea, that is why my words have been wild. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me, my spirit drinks their poison. God's sudden terrors are arrayed against me. Does the wild donkey bray when it is near grass, or does the ox low near its fodder? Can food that is tasteless be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? I refuse to touch such things. They are loathsome food to me. Oh, that my request would be realized, and that God would grant me what I long for, and that God would be willing to crush me, that he would let loose his hand and kill me. Then I would yet have my comfort, then I would rejoice in spite of pitiless pain, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should wait, and what is my end that I should prolong my life? Is my strength like that of stones, or is my flesh made of bronze? Is not my power to help myself nothing, and has not every resource been driven from me? To the one in despair, kindness should come from his friend, even if he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. My brothers have been as treacherous as a seasonal stream, and as the riverbeds of the intermittent streams that flow away. They are dark because of ice, snow is piled up over them. When they are scorched, they dry up. When it is hot, they vanish from their place. Caravans turn aside from their routes. They go into the wasteland and perish. The caravans of Tima looked intently for these streams. The traveling merchants of Sheba hoped for them. They were distressed because each one had been so confident. They arrived there, but were disappointed. For now you have become like these streams that are no help. You see a terror and are afraid. Have I ever said, give me something and from your fortune make gifts in my favor? Or deliver me from the enemy's power and from the hand of tyrants, ransom me? Teach me and I, for my part, will be silent. Explain to me how I have been mistaken. How painful are honest words. But what does your reproof prove? Do you intend to criticize mere words and treat the words of a despairing man as wind? Yes, you would gamble for the fatherless and auction off your friend. Now then, be good enough to look at me, and I will not lie to your face. Relent, let there be no falsehood. Reconsider, for my righteousness is intact. Is there any falsehood on my lips? Can my mouth not discern evil things? Proverbs 6 My child, if you have made a pledge for your neighbor and have become a guarantor for a stranger, if you've been ensnared by the words you've uttered and have been caught by the words you've spoken, then, my child, do this in order to deliver yourself because you've fallen into your neighbor's power. Go humble yourself and appeal firmly to your neighbor. Permit no sleep to your eyes or slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourself like a gazelle from a snare and like a bird from the trap of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Observe its ways and be wise. It has no commander, overseer, or ruler, yet it prepares its food in the summer. It gathers at the harvest what it will eat. How long, you sluggard, will you lie there? When will you rise up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to relax? and your poverty will come like a robber, and your need like an armed man. A worthless and wicked person walks around saying perverse things. He winks with his eyes, signals with his feet, and points with his fingers. He plots evil with perverse thoughts in his heart. He spreads contention at all times. Therefore his disaster will come suddenly. In an instant he will be broken, and there will be no remedy. There are six things that the Lord hates, even seven things that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift to run to evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who spreads discord among family members. 
My child, guard the commands of your father and do not forsake the instruction of your mother. Bind them on your heart continually. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk about, they will guide you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. When you wake up, they will talk to you. For the commandments are like a lamp, instruction like a light. And rebukes of discipline are like the road leading to life, by keeping you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the loose woman. Do not lust in your heart for her beauty, and do not let her captivate you with her alluring eyes. For on account of a prostitute, one is brought down to a loaf of bread. But the wife of another man? Praise on your precious life. Can a man hold fire against his chest without burning his clothes? Can a man walk on hot coals without scorching his feet? So it is with the one who has sex with his neighbor's wife. No one who touches her will escape punishment. People do not despise a thief when he steals to fulfill his need when he's hungry. Yet if he's caught, he must repay seven times over. He might even have to give all the wealth of his house. A man who commits adultery with a woman lacks wisdom. Whoever does it destroys his own life. He will be beaten and despised and his reproach will not be wiped away. For jealousy kindles a husband's rage and he will not show mercy when he takes revenge. He will not consider any compensation. He will not be willing even if you multiply the compensation. Ecclesiastes 6 here is another misfortune that I've seen on earth, and it weighs heavily on people. God gives a man riches, prosperity, and wealth so that he lacks nothing that his heart desires. Yet God does not enable him to enjoy the fruit of his labor. Instead, someone else enjoys it. This is fruitless and a grave misfortune. Even if a man fathers a hundred children and lives many years, even if he lives a long time but cannot enjoy his prosperity, even if he were to live forever, I would say a stillborn child is better off than he is. Though the stillborn child came into the world for no reason and departed into darkness, though its name is shrouded in darkness, though it never saw the light of day nor knew anything, yet it has more rest than that man. If he should live a thousand years twice, yet does not enjoy his prosperity, for both of them die. All of man's labor is for nothing more than to fill his stomach, yet his appetite is never, never satisfied. So what advantage does a wise man have over a fool? And what advantage does a pauper gain by knowing how to survive? It is better to be content with what the eyes see than for one's heart always to crave more. This continual longing is futile, like chasing the wind. Whatever has happened was foreordained, and what happens to a person was also foreknown. It is useless for him to argue with God about his fate, because God is more powerful than he is. The more one argues with words, the less he accomplishes. How does that benefit him? For no one knows what is best for a person during his life, during the few days of his fleeting life, for they pass away like a shadow. Nor can anyone tell him what the future will hold for him on earth. And as always, thank you so much for being here today. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe right there. And click the bell so you can get notifications on new videos. Would you hit that like button for me as well? And I will see you tomorrow. Maranatha! You'll carry me out of the storm. I'm standing at the crossroads I'm lost without a clue I need a big pink neon sign To show me what to do I thank you, Lord It glorifies you when you're the only answer I praise you, Lord Holding what's too much for me And I'm amazed by you, Lord Because nothing's too big and nothing's too small to lay at your feet